Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Jim Bridger's trail in 1864 was the first, quickest, and least hazardous route for settlers to follow as they migrated to the gold fields of Montana Territory. Wagon trains had essentially been granted safe passage by Indian tribes for Bridger's route west of the Bighorn Mountains in Wyoming. Because the tribes that controlled the area were largely interested in keeping their hunting grounds east of the Bighorns free of government and settler interference. In celebration of Jim Bridger's pioneering spirit, the Wyoming Centennial Wagon Train was conceived as an event that would help celebrate a century of Wyoming statehood. The wagon train attracted over a hundred wagons and on some days more than a thousand participants on horseback or on foot. That pioneer spirit was reflected by the participants in the 1990 wagon train and they'll tell of their experiences along Jim Bridger's trail. See, it's not an easy, it's not, you gotta start from young. You can't read this out of a book. You know, you can, you, you can take an old broken down team and the kid could drive it, you know. But these young horses, it takes a team to do it, you know. It's not hard if you know it, but it's hard if you don't know it, you bet. We think of it as being the people's wagon train. It belongs to everybody in this wagon train. It's not my wagon train. It's not the board of directors wagon train. It belongs to the people that have participated in it. And, I, and one of the things that's, that really hit me when we, when we rolled into Warland uh, and all the people along the streets were standing there applauding and cheering is that it was not just the particip participants wagon train, but it belonged to all the people. And they really made us feel that. It, it, was, a, uh, it was a pretty overwhelming experience for me. Hello guys, how are you? Uh, when I was in high school, I worked on a ranch down in Matitsi and I fell in love with the country, so after I graduated from high school, and first chance I could get, well, I, I moved up here and just uh, loved the country ever since and always wanted to be a cowboy, but. I'm an electrician by trade, so this, this is something I really enjoy. They're doing things they just dreamed about doing but never had the opportunity to do before, you know? And I think these kids on this wagon train is gonna be something that they'll talk about it for many, many years. And I will too. <laughs> well, I think we got it pretty easy compared to what they had a hundred years ago. We have the hay wagon, our trucks hauling hay to us. We've got the uh, Porta potties hauled in. We have water hauled in. Uh, we go at our own, whatever we feel like. If it rains, we can find a house somewhere to get into, maybe or into Worland. They didn't have those things. They had to pack everything they had on their wagons, and they went for it. They didn't have all the luxuries of having a, a gas stove to cook on and a grass and a hay hauled in. They had to hunt for some feed for those horses and cows. Even though we we're having a, you know, a roughing it at this day, but it's not rough like they had. All right. 
I retired from John Deere Tractor Company two years ago and I built me a log cabin up in Sangre de Cristos, Colorado and so I've just been riding and, and using some of the quarter horses I've raised in the last 35 years. And when I heard about this situation here, I really couldn't believe it was happening. You know, not in this particular sense of the word because anybody can go on this. I mean, there's nobody too poor to do it as long as you've got the time. I have several reasons for coming. One, I'm a Civil War reenactor. And when the war was going on, Abraham Lincoln couldn't afford to send Yankee troops out here to defend the West. So he went to the Confederate prisoners the Northerners had captured and offered them release from the federal prisons if they would go West and defend the West and not fight against the Union. So 6,000 Southerners came out to the West and uh, defended this part of the country and many of them stayed when the war ended. And so uh, I think the South ought to be represented here because there's a lot of Southern blood flowing in these Wyoming veins out here. And that was one reason for coming. Another reason, uh, I like living history, and that's exactly what they're doing here. They're recreating and living history and steadfasting their heritage. And uh, I wanted the experience of learning to drive a wagon. I own three wagons, and during my life I've owned 34 original Civil War cannon, wrote the book Confederate Cannon Foundries. Now I'm writing one on the Northern Foundries, and with these three wagons you need a team. I didn't know if I wanted mules, draft horses, or or big horses, so I called Kevin Lauer out at the Rand Creek Ranch, and he's an outfitter, and uh, we struck a deal that I could drive his wagon for him. And old Samson and Delilah have been kind of a pleasure to learn on, and uh, learned a lot. Learned how to harness them up, and I've been driving them most every day now. Hell closely to the Bridger Trail are you actually sticking? Well, we're not at times. At times we're right on it. And at times we're well off it because uh, some of those trails before took routes that were simple and today they're highways and it's pretty hard to take a group this size with traffic and working with the highway patrol and all the government agencies when you start in blocking traffic, especially this time in Wyoming when you got the summertime and the tourists and all that. So it just takes a lot of, lot of effort. We're on it part of the time and we're off it a few miles a part of the time. Of course, when we hit Powell and then we swing west to Cody, uh, at that point we, uh, we leave it because the original Bridger Trail then continued on up north and into Montana and hooks up with the old Bozeman Trail which actually came up on the east side of course, the Big, Big Horn Mountains, which we look at out there now, was where the original, uh, the original Bozeman Trail took. And of course, the reason for the Bridger Trail was to come west of the mountains because the Indians told back in those days, the Indians said, the Sioux said you could go west of the mountains and not on the east side. So that's how the Jim Bridger Trail was originally established and the purpose for us. And it was a short-lived trail because the situation with the Indians changed and then the Bozeman Trail, which was an easier route, was then re-established again later on. I've really, I've only had mules like eight years now, and I didn't know nothing about mules. I was raised around horses. I can't knock horses, and I can't say mules are better. But for what I'm doing, like I want to pack, and uh, different, uh, like pack hunting or, or fishing, and then I also want to drive. And I think mule is just a little bit more more economical to do than to do that than uh, horses. Horses are so big you can't pack them, you can't ride them. Uh, and I think a mule is a, be a, pack a better pack horse anyway. The smaller, easier to reach, <laughs> tinier. And I'm getting smaller and old. <laughs> you bet. Now that's one of my favorite work horses. This is Polly. She gets to work on the right-hand side of this wagon over here, and uh, so she's making the whole trip. Of course, all all this bunch is going on the whole trip. Yeah, we uh, came up with uh, we have five crossbred horses that we're working, Belgian Arabian crosses, 
and we kind of enjoy that. They work well for us, and uh, that's our teams. This is my saddle horse. His name's Shorty, and that's my pack horse. She's Brownie, and we're going to go all the way to Cody. God willing, and the creek don't rise. Okay, this is my team. I bought them here about six months ago at Waverly, Iowa. I'm kind of proud of them. They're uh, Appaloosa Leopards. As you see, they got uh, all the spots on them. Their names are Matt and Kitty and Sonny and Cher. And uh, we've got them home and uh, they was just started to drive and we decided to uh, take them and, and make them into a, a group of four. And uh, they're real classy on our stagecoach. They, they give a lot of class and uh, they're getting to like the Wyoming area real well. We, we, they're doing us a real good job out here. Well, come meet my horses. Oh, I'm having people sign a petition here. Don't bird the flag supporters. And everybody I've asked to do it so far has signed it. Each other, finally. Oh. Hi there, lady. Hello, lady. You want to be a star? Huh? You want to be a star? Huh? Yeah, well, then fly start the body. Fly there, huh? Let's have your foot, huh? Can you shake hands? Shake hands. Come on, big good girl. Shake hands. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, keep it here. Keep it here. That's pretty close. Yeah. That's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah. I had a. We had her, her hoof uh, at one reset today, and uh, moved on. Come on, where are you at? Turn around, back, 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 back. Come on. This is the best. Now can you shake hands? Huh? Can you shake hands? Can you shake hands? Bad up, boy. Come on. Come on. Get it up here. Get it up. Yeah. 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 We do yeah. They're not very wild, are they? <laughs> I was riding along the trail and I saw some people going down to somewhere and I thought, well, maybe I should look down there and see what's happening. So I, I looked down there and I saw a horse running away. So I started running down there to catch the horse and I was the first one there and then one guy came and started helping me. Finally we went down to the fence and we um, fa we finally caught him. Well going down the steep hills with the wagons and like once we had to unhook a, the very front wagon because we had to go through this draw. It was really like a dip mostly. Then my mom was the first one to go through without having to unhook. Everybody started clapping about that, but I don't know why. And what did these young people think of the efforts of the pioneers? I just don't know how they could have done it, man. All this stuff, they didn't have roads or water trucks and stuff. It's unbelievable. I don't know how they could have made it. Mm. The dirt, dust blowing in your eyes. Probably starving to death or something like that. Getting stuck. <laughs> How are the kids doing on the wagon train? What's what do you what do you expect that they'll learn from it? Oh, loving animals for one. You know what I mean? They 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 they're doing everything. They're running these horses out and getting away from the getting away from the trail, go out of ways, come back again on a run. It's fun to watch them. That come in and help you help you try to help you feed and such or water, and I kind of like it. Five out of the, my seven grandchildren have had a chance to be on here, and, and uh, that was the thing that I really wanted to do first, was get my grandchildren a chance to see what uh, riding in a wagon train was like. And uh, they, they learned a lot in, in a few days. Uh, it was slow, it was wet, it was bumpy. The nights were uh, out in the boonies. They had a good time. Of course, an adventure depends upon who's telling the story. And. Uh, then we got, oh gosh, let's see, well, we had a wagon here the other day, gosh, uh, it was going along and somebody cut in front of it and caused one horse to pull back or something and it fell over in the gully and the wagon fell over and other than that, oh, 
Oh yeah, we have life flight, flight helicopters. Yeah, we come in, we bring the life flight helicopters come in if someone gets a bloody nose and um, uh, things like that. So today we've had a lot of fun and a lot of things have happened. We had that trailer come off the cliff the other day. Well, it didn't come off the cliff the other day. He tried to pull up this hill and I don't know where he learned to drive a trailer. But anyhow, he got up there and he wanted to keep going. He had horses in this trailer, but he couldn't make the hill. So they say he backed up, but he didn't use his mirror when he backed up and he ran the trailer off the side. He was hanging about, oh, five, six feet off the side of this hill here. And they got the, they led the horses out the door, the front door on the side of the trailer. And then they took and uh, we got the army truck up there and we winched it kind of back on the road and we got him straightened out and he went back up the hill and he was in good shape. And then we have to deal with guys like Tom Angle and Lee Jensen and uh, John Kincaid and, you know, uh, Jake Clark, and it, it's been a fun time. It's been a great time. Well, it's a, it's a stagecoach. It's a, a copy of the Overland Stagecoach out of, uh, had it made in New Mexico. It's a nine passenger sleeping coach, which wow. the Overland only made uh, three of. That was when they was in competition with Wells Fargo and several other stage companies. The leather comes up into the windows and they roll up into a window, which you can see in and you can hang your arm out. Uh, the leather, they told me there was about right at two cow leather on the, on the coach that supports the coach. And then I went and I supported it up a little more and I put the hydraulic brakes on it. This is for six horses to go into the stagecoach run, which I got all my levers up there. But the historical part of it is that it's still got the original, original brakes, which you can see right up here with this lever here that I use. And this, uh, this all works, the wheels, it will stop the wheels, but I use the hydraulics most of the time with my team. We, uh, one day we had 4,100 pounds, we was estimate with the uh, coach, and uh, we've got 850-pound uh, horses, and they, they made it uh, go real easy. Because they're on ball bearings, and it rolls real easy, it stops easy, so the horses don't have to hardly work to pull it. For the wagon train organizers, the primary mission was for the well-being of hundreds of 20th century adventurers. Kane Pyatt, a principal organizer, also served as trail boss. The trail boss is where the buck stops. And essentially, I'm the director of operations. I'm the person that knows all the ins and outs and all of how everything, all the logistics of this wagon train work together or are supposed to work together. And I'm pretty much the one that, uh, from the very beginning, you know, started with the wagon train and have been there all through it. So I, I have a good understanding of how it's supposed to work. And I'm, that's where the buck stops. I'm the ultimate decision maker. And many others shared the responsibility of seeing the wagon train over a 300-mile trail. My duty, I drive a team of, of Belgians at this point. I help with breakfast and supper at the cook shack. I have two kids I'm also taking care of. And I play a little fiddle at night, a little camp entertainment. I'm uh, an outrider like Morris, and, and sometimes I'm driving teams. Sometimes I wash dishes, just whatever they need done around here. My position is uh, chairman of the outfitter group. There's seven outfitters. Uh, my job is to try to coordinate all the efforts that we're doing together and uh, make it all one, one communal effort, I guess you could say. We've been helping people with vet, any vet needs. We've had uh, some horses that have started coughing. We give them some combiotic medicine and whatnot. And <clears throat> uh, we help them with their hay and I guess we're just in charge of the circles and people come to us with all kinds of problems and we're trying to appease them. The main concern that I have is to try to get this whole thing to Cody without a mishap as far as horses are concerned, horses and wagons. And uh, anything that pertains to that I feel is my responsibility. Well I'm out rider on this Surrey in case the, if anything goes wrong you're there to pick up a wreck. I mean if say a mule run a bridle off or tug broke or anything, you, you're right there and, and grab a hold up before anything gets out of hand and, and gets a wreck or anything. <clears throat> now the next four days, someone else is going to have to ride, be the outrider here because some people rented a team and they can't drive it, so I'm going to have to go drive a team the next four days, which is whatever, don't make any difference to me, I can do any of this work that they are. I say, you know what, 
If you stop and look at the whole operation, and you look at the support, and you look out there, you see all those wagons, you see all the tents, you see all the people doing things, involved in activities, and having a great time, I said, you know, there's had to be a lot of good things done to make this happen. Well, basics, I think, are just, um, besides having enough water and uh, porta potties in this case, for this wagon train, are, to me, basics are just good old uh, human contact and, and knowing that um, helping each other out is what counts in this world. And then when something happens, you don't ask questions, you don't stop to wonder what the consequences or the lawsuits might be, you just help each other. And forming some, you know, forming some real, true um, friendships based on, um, based on, on just uh, kindnesses and concern and caring. And it doesn't matter if your values are different, your politics are different. That doesn't even come up. What matters is that um, you're there to help each other out, and you're there to be friends. And we give each other hugs in the morning and say good morning. And people have been bringing me coffee since I hurt my ribs and helping me take my boots off. And in some cases, helping me take my pants off <laughs> when I was hurting real bad. And I said, to me, that's basics. With outfitters, wagons, horses, mules, water trucks, water troughs, porta potties, and visitors, and the sheer logistics of putting 500 to 1,500 people on the move over 300 miles of primitive Wyoming landscape, the Centennial Wagon Train was a people's event. Well, we like to think of it as such, and, and actually the people of Wyoming, the small businessman, the individual, and the people of other states who are participating supported this wagon train. We have no large major corporate financial contribution. Um, we've had upwards of five, ten thousand $10,000 has been the largest contribution, and those have been from the small business person in Wyoming. And we've had individual contributions, and that's what's kept this wagon train flowing. And so we think of it as being the people's wagon train. When you look at the, the magnitude of this whole thing and what it took to put it together, all the stock that has to be fed, the people that have to be taken care of, the responsibility to accidents and whatever and whatnot. We've had a couple and there was a helicopter right in here and picked them up and took them out. And uh, this is all a credit to leaders here that put this together. The people I'm meeting, there are so many fantastic people. Uh, it's great to run into old friends like this that, that I haven't seen before or seen for a while and, and, and work with them, but it's great to meet the, the new people that I'm meeting. There's a lot of good Teamsters and a lot of good riders here, and it's, it's great to run into some good, good hands for a change. I've never been on a wagon train like this before. I've been on cattle drives the last 10 and 12 days, and, and when I was a kid, we used to live north of the Yellowstone River for about 25 miles and we'd have to go to town for groceries with a team in the wagon, you know. But so I've never been on anything like this. But I don't think anybody else ever has either. Well, one of, the, one of the best things for me, besides the satisfying feeling of seeing it actually rolling and all the numbers of people coming from all over the country is the friendships that have been formed. And I've formed some really good friendships here on this wagon train that I probably never would have formed in any other way. And a lot of people that lived right in the same town with me that I would have never met had I just been walking down the streets of Cody or, you know, working at a job. Where you're out here in the real world, um, you form a lot of lasting bonding friendships because you're back to basics, you're back to what life's really all about. I'm having a wonderful time and meeting wonderful people and getting to know the state of Wyoming real well. And if I start crying, I'm sorry, but this is very emotional. It's been lots of fun. It's going to be hard to leave it.
happy birthday, Wyoming, the whole bit. You know, we're all working towards one goal and celebrating it and doing our best to have a good time while we're doing it.